This podcast is for a mature audience and may be viewed as inappropriate or insensitive to some. This discretion is advised. The intention is to share conversation of like and unlike-minded individuals as they try to be the best them they can be in a life full of challenges, searching for love, acceptance, and positivity. Call 669-241-1422 and share yourself or catch up with Sweet Baby Jane for an anonymous face-to-face interview. Feel free to call in with any questions, stories, thoughts, or anything you would love to talk about and share. Nothing is off the table when talking sweet with Sweet Baby Jane. Nothing is off the table when talking with Sweet Baby Jane at 669-241-1422. Hello? Ladies and gents, gents and ladies, we have this young lady here on the line. You know, this is always a no face, no case scenario here on Talking Sweet with Sweet Baby J. Would you like to share your name, young lady? Oh, let me see. I think I'll call myself mm, Miss uh, Ms. Black. <laughs> oh, Ms. Ms. No, no, wait, maybe Ms. White. Oh, wait. <laughs> we we confused no, with it. No, maybe Ms. Black. Oh, you don't, you don't Ms. know. Miss White. Oh, oh, I know. Miss Female Black. Oh, Miss Female Black. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We have a long time listener here. <laughs> What's going on, lady? How you doing on this beautiful day? Oh, it is awesome. It is an awesome day. I'm blessed. I am feeling really, really great. Really? Um, I did my COVID nineteen test today. <laughs> oh, you did a wait, you did a COVID nineteen test? Uh huh. Yo, I, I did the uh, How was that? I had one. I hear they mm. put that thing so deep in your nose. How is that? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. They had the saliva one because I told them you're not doing the nose and you're not doing the throat. Um, I'll do the the swab and I I tell you all your cheeks, and which you do it yourself. Your cheeks under your tongue, your tongue the root, the top of your mouth. Then you just put it in this little tube and it has some kind of solution in it. So it was good for about not even a good three minutes. When mm-hmm. when they are doing the test, the throat one, do they go deep in your throat? Because I know in the nose. I don't know. I didn't taste the throat. I just did the saliva. And the saliva, they work mainly in your mouth. Right, so, you know, your jaw, mm. underneath your tongue, around your um, gums. Ooh. And up, yeah, and, Ooh. and that's it. And you're doing it yourself. They're not doing it. You're doing it. Wow, I'm usually the one putting it down someone's throat, but this is uh, okay. Mm-hmm. So no, I said I couldn't do that one because it wouldn't have been pretty. <laughs> it, really? Why you don't like things down no. your throat? Uh, uh, uh-uh, it wouldn't have been pretty. Oh, they would have had a mess to clean up. <laughs> oh, I thought I. Th- so if if the dude, if if it was a a young man, incredibly attractive, and he said, "Excuse that- me, excuse me, Miss Black, can I put this down your throat?" What would you have said? No. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You haven't. No. We haven't even had our first drink, and you want to put stuff down my throat? What's wrong with how you? How about that? Yeah. How about know, that? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> go figure. Go figure. So you are, as I know, you're a single young lady, mm-hmm. um, and you are out here getting tested for COVID nineteen. Uh, are you in an age bracket in which you should have an? A higher concern for uh, COVID? Yes, yes, yes. You're a senior citizen? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Dang. You sound all young and vivacious. You sound like a fruit, a fresh fruit. Oh, thank you so much. May that be until I am 93. Uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So why did you get tested? What, what was your concern? Were you having some... Uh... Well, well, I know I've been... Um, in, I've been self-isolating, um, and I follow the protocol, the gloves, the mask when I go out. But <laughs> I think I did something kind of silly. Uh-oh. I had some. <laughs> what did you do? I had, I had some um, lawn. I had some landscaping done in front of my house. And um, the guys who, who came, they didn't have their mask on. Okay. Right, and now I'm out there, you know, over overseeing. Talk, talking, <laughs> you was all in their face. Were they good looking guys at least? <laughs> overseeing and what have you, and it didn't dawn on me until after it was all done. Oh, this is great, marvelous. 
oh shoot, I didn't have on my mask. Yeah, see that you know the thing is that the, what I appreciate is the fact that you actually you know caught yourself. It's like, whoa, wait a minute, I didn't have on my mask. I see a lot of people that think that everyone is a sheep that they're just following the rules. <laughs> I think we all are actually looking out for one another. And that's what I feel Mm -hmm. that we all need to do. Yes. Yes. And that's very important because, you know, why would, you know, I not be concerned about my neighbor, you know, whomever that may be. And, and, you know, because that's going to come right back to me somewhere along the line. We all have to look out for one another. So you live, you are self-isolating. Do you live alone? Yes. Are you single? Yes. Oh, are you dating? No. Wait a minute. So you're you're uh, almost a senior I, citizen. You're single and you're self isolating. How is it, you know, being single? At, you know, in these uh, older years, do you find yourself, you know, wanting company? Are you dating? But you know, this COVID nineteen messed it up for you. Are you on any apps where they're you know dating apps or anything like that? Okay, so now I can say this. I am 63 years old. Mm, okay. So I, I have no shame in my game. This is what I 63 look, sounds like? You? Yes, and I think I look real, real good for my age. And I know I have a lot of life and vitality you, in me as you well. You could do a 1-900 phone number. Okay. <laughs> However, <laughs> I recently moved from New York to Delaware. I moved from New York in October, so I have relocated to Delaware and, um, you know, being busy trying to get the house and everything in order, I really haven't had time to, to do anything or to go out. But do you um, want to? And, you know, some people are actually um, really good with being single, you know, and the others I actually look for companionship. But I am uh, uh, good with being single, and I'm fine, and in, in, to tell you the truth, but it's something that I like you come like- my way that I think that I am now open, mm. you know, to the prospects. How, now, long, how long have you been single? I've been single. Um, I was married for well over 20 years. Wow. And uh, he passed away. Mm-hmm. And then I was in a relationship for uh, a little bit over 15 years, and he passed away. You out here killing um, Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> and Snaps? I'm not the black widow. Is, is, <laughs> are you going to be on the next episode of Snapped? Are you calling me from a prison? <laughs> Talking about I relocated to Delaware. What what prison are you in? I gotta look up what jails are in Delaware. Let me find out. Who's your cellmate? Talking about you are self isolating. You got a bunk buddy. <laughs> so he yeah he's he's been he's been gone since twenty um, eleven. Oh, sorry to hear. So I virtually right. I've been single, and it took me a long time to. Um, get over to get over that and actually i didn't think i was even willing to entertain a conversation till maybe about maybe three three, four years ago really yeah so you went so long and did not even like was it the grief or don't even yeah don't even yeah you talk to me no i'm not interested bye (laughs) really yeah, yeah, was it, it was like that. Was it because you were so in love with your ex-husband and, you know, you just couldn't understand? That the... wasn't my husband. My husband died first. That was my partner. Oh, okay. For um, 15 years, yeah. right. My husband, 20, 20 years married. Wow. My partner, 15 years together. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So, but you were you were that into him that you just couldn't imagine being with someone else? How, did, how does that work out? Because I... I don't know how long I I would go. Would probably be like, still planning a funeral, and <laughs> I'd be like this. And this is my new girlfriend. <laughs> I'm no, you, you, you're saying I know, I know, and you're saying that, but no, um, I don't know. We would just, we would just click. I, I I don't know. There was there was just something about us that um, I was comfortable. I was I was. We made each other happy. We cared for one another. We were concerned for one another. Um, we looked out for one another. I mean, it was just, it was just right. You know, I and have... I do believe that was a godly. Um, that was that I believe he was put into my life, and I was put into his life. I truly believe by God. That's a beautiful thing. Well, mm-hmm. I recall in my past single life being with females after they've broke up with their boyfriends or they were on the verge of breaking up 
And when I'm with them, you know, they really love their whoever their this other dude was. And they would cry because like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Over and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> After that relationship, being physical with another man. I, have you been physical with another man since then? No. Really? So since 2011, you have not been physical? Mm-mm, no. Oh, my goodness gracious. You are a true soldier out here. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Ain't nothing falling off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And how does that? I mean, listen, there are people out here that can't go one week without, you know, having a little action in their life. How do you go and so long? I don't, I, I really don't know. Your makeup. I was never one, like I said, I was married and I was married at an early age. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So I only knew one man at that, at that time. And then my partner came. Um, several years after my divorce. And to me, sex is, is a beautiful thing, is wonderful. You ain't lying. But that's but that's not everything. that's not the, the everything. Mm -hmm. And the being cared for and looked after, um, that other part of intimacy that that sex don't give you, but that other part of intimacy, that's what's more important to me. But at the same time, we cannot deny that uh, the things that sex no. provide, that sex, that relief, that. that it <sighs> release, the, the release of energy is a wonderful thing, yes. But um, you, I haven't. You haven't found anyone. I, to, I haven't. To, I have not had. To uh, give you the base. A sexual partner. I have not had a sexual partner. And even it's been longer than that because he was sick a couple of years prior to that. Wow. Yeah. So. You know, that's that's pretty amazing. So right, I know that you see you're quiet. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, to go so long, it, that that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I'm at a loss for I, words. I, I'm usually not at a loss for words, but yeah, I know, they, I know, because you don't know what you say. And you say years. But, oh, but you're still normal. Yes, I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because you want to know something. It, it, I, I guarantee you, it's probably more frequent than not you know even with married couples well the thing is that there are from what i understand a lot of married couples that actually do not have a sex life i could not imagine mm -hmm. but there are a lot of sex of married couples are you walking no i'm standing woman i, I had i, I had a, i hear a everything that you're doing <laughs> Okay, I had I, I'm having a glass of pink Moscato, mm. and a little heat just hit me. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't listen. Don't let them landscapers come back over and uh, <laughs> take care of your lawn per se. <laughs> there are married couples that don't have sex. Uh huh. Totally understandable. There are also married couples that don't have sex with each other. That's right. But they are fully having sex. Mm hmm. I think they're both just as common. There are a lot of couples out there that stay together because of uh, convenience. There are couples yeah. out there waiting to, for it to end because children are uh, going to be graduating and they can't wait for a divorce. Different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's each one. I, I just personally don't really see me laying next to someone each night and having no desire. How, how does that work that you have no desire to be physically involved with this person. Well, there's nobody there but the pillow, also there's no person for me to be physically into and you know, to look at. But there are so, apps and so you can you can meet somebody. I don't know. Have you no, ever tried I, any dating I, apps? No, I haven't. And actually I listened to one of uh, the podcasts about um uh, was it Tinder Tinder? <laughs> And I mean, it, the young, the young lady, it, it was a beautiful thing that she met, she met someone, but no, I have, and I think I've watched too many movies. So I, I, I couldn't be comfortable because I said, they'll find my body chopped up all over uh, someplace. So no, thank you. Well, <laughs> if you look at, or if you, you've listened uh, to my last episode, the mm -hmm. young lady, she was single for a while. Gorgeous yeah. young lady. Yeah, I know her. She actually met her soon-to-be husband on Tinder. Now, Tinder is a website that I really thought was pretty much just for people just trying to hook up. But uh -huh. she 100% knew what she was looking for, 
what she wanted out of it and the fact that it was free and it really worked out for her. Yeah, I, I listened and I said, that's a wonderful thing. It, it made me do a, mm, a ha, aha moment, but then it passed because you really have to be, okay, now you, she said she did a year of research or something. Well, you, you, you know, anything so, that you're going to get involved with that could possibly be long term. I would always advise doing your research, as she did. Uh huh. So maybe you should do your research, see what happens, and you never know. I'll give it some thought, but I, I doubt it because I know people have been pushing me and, and advising me that you should do, you should do. Uh, I don't think so. So, but you know, I'll so wait you, fi- out. you find yourself with a lot of people always asking you to. Uh, a lot of people seem to be concerned about your dating life and the fact that you should. Yeah. Do, do they think that you're single and crying yourself to sleep every night? No, I think that because of who I am, they think that it would be nice if I have someone in my life. I think I think more that than anything else. Um, I can see that you have uh, an amazing spirit and. Truth be told, I know you, but I won't say your name. You know, you, you have an amazing spirit uh, about you. Clearly, you have a wonderful laugh. And it's always good to have someone that you can laugh with. I, if, if my wife didn't have me to at least laugh with, pretty sure. I don't, I don't know how it would work because relationships are hard. <laughs> yes, relationships are hard. And, but, and, you know, I think that I, my life is kind of full because I've been blessed with my children with friends like you and wifey and godchildren and friends, just friends, male and female, that I can just be me with at all times, good, bad, or indifferent, and I'm good. Now, I would, I think somewhere along the line, I probably would like to meet someone, but then that comes to another question, what do I want? Because do I want to get married? I don't know, and I really don't think so. Um, well, there's oh. there's the next part. So if you, you meet someone, and they are up in age as yourself, they mm-hmm. have everything established, they have their own house, you have your own house, how does that work? Would you move in with yeah. them? Would you have them move in with you? Would you actually even consider someone that didn't have a house and have them move in with you? What Are there certain guidelines when you're an older woman? And, and trying to entertain a relationship. Are there, are there guidelines that need to be met? Is there a baseline? Does a person just have to have a pulse and all his teeth? Like, what, what's up? And that's the question. Because, and I, I've thought about it. In fact, myself and girlfriends have, we have even talked about it. And I think I've come to a point now. I like my life the way it is, the way it is. When I want to go, I don't have to ask anybody. I don't have to answer to anyone. I don't have to say, well, look, I'm doing thus and so. I get up and I go. And then when it comes to you have to be established, and the, that other question is, yes, where do, where do we reside? Well, you know what? I kind of like being in my own home, and it would like be a weekend thing. You can come see me a couple of times <laughs> on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, go home. Well, there's another question just popped in my head. Got to drop it. <laughs> you get with someone. They're a wonderful guy. Everything is going good. Mm-hmm. But yet, them being possibly older in age, the equipment is not working anymore. Are you good with that? Would you take on somebody that has erectile dysfunction? Would you entertain a relationship with someone that has that going on? Now, I remember I told you that my partner for two years, he was not able to do anything. And although we had an established relationship, but my love actually, I believe, was even stronger. Really? Yeah. And so- I think and I think that's part of the reason why I, I went. It was like I mourned for such a long time because it was all other aspects of the relationship and not the physical. So the physical groom... I'm over here phys- choking because no, I can't believe it, really. Don't. Okay. Yeah, the physical don't rule, and, and that's the thing. Everything else was more important than, than that. Wow. Yeah, I know. Um, being a young man and a, uh, or, and, or a young woman, I can understand your reason. What? As you grow older, there's other things that are much more important. Much I 100% more important. get it. You know, I, mm-hmm. I know that there very well may be a day when... Uh, this love rod is not going to be working anymore. And I am actually ready to tie a pencil to it to uh, keep it working. <laughs> so, <laughs> and when I can't do that anymore, 
you know, it, it is what it is. Life goes on. But we all know that it's not going to work forever with everyone. Right. The thing is to use it as much as you can while you can use it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Get it popping at every opportunity you can. Just be safe about it. That's right. There you go. So another thing about that even just popped in my head. In the senior citizen community, especially in uh, senior citizen homes. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let, 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 me, let me school you. Seasoned. Seasoned men and women. Oh, seasoned. There you go. Okay. When it comes to seasoned men and women. All right. <laughs> there seems to be also a very big uptake with STDs because of the fact that there is the belief that I've lived my life. I have, how much longer do I have to live? Protection for what? So they get a they. There are a lot of SEDs, you know, in the seasoned community, because they really like yo. I'm gonna have my. I'm gonna feel it, because I don't know how long <laughs> I'm gonna be feeling it. And 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 what yeah, do you feel I, about that? I heard that, and they can have at it. But what does it do? If, I think it was a. I don't know if it was a, a documentary. Maybe it was a movie. And everyone was doing everyone else, and every, the whole, the entire um, home was was filled with STDs. And I said, "No, you know that don't make no kind of sense." <laughs> <laughs> but it's a reality that's out there. People, or they get lonely. There's a desire to be with someone, and I can only imagine that when you're up there in years, you're not thinking that you're going to be around for twenty or thirty years. You hope so, but you know, realistically speaking, not everyone's hitting a hundred. But you say, heck, what am I putting on protection for? I'm going to feel it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have old Gretel here, take out those dentures, and I'm going to feel what that jaw is like. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it really happens. And, and a part of me understands it, and another part of me is like, whoa, you, you wilding. But at the same time, it's like, I took this pill, how long is it going to last? I, what is it? If, if an erection lasts four hours, I could not imagine going through four hours worth of a con, of condoms. Oh, my God. Well, I, don't, I, I don't think that it lasts four hours. It could last the four hours. But I don't think it lasts the four hours because I think you'd be in trouble. Think about it. You're dating someone. <laughs> they take that blue pill or Cialis. I don't know what color that is. But they take the pill. And next thing you know, they got it for four hours. And you haven't done anything in a while. You think you can last four hours? Uh, heck no. <laughs> take, take your stuff and go on about your business. <laughs> so you're not, trying, you're not trying to have a four-hour session? I'm telling you, uh -uh. it's not that deep, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm, this is a lake. This is not the ocean, player. <laughs> It's not that deep. So would you consider yourself a, like, a reborn virgin? I've heard ladies say they haven't done anything in months, they, and they consider themselves a reborn virgin. And this is just months. For you, it's been years. Are you the Virgin Mary? No, I am not. And, 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 and no, you can't be a reborn virgin. <laughs> Look, these young girls out here looking for they any say, reason. That's a once-in-a-lifetime pop. <laughs> pop, okay. <laughs> That balloon you cannot rebuff. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. It's strange because this is this is really what's going on. I'm asking some really good questions, and you here on Talking Sweet, you are actually educating everyone because who knew? We're all gonna get old one day, God willing. COVID nineteen uh -huh. is testing that for a lot of people. What what do you do when you get older in, in those in years? Uh, more seasoned and let's say if a partner passes away or you or the person passed away, what do you expect for your partner to do? You know, a lot of people mm. say, if I pass away, I'm going to haunt you for every man that comes in the house. <laughs> well, you might do a lot of haunting because she could very well be getting it popping every day, different dude. What can you do? Mm. That's right. It, it, there's nothing that, that one can do. But I, I truly believe that I'm not saying that some women or men are not out there having a real, real good time. A really good time. That in that manner, 
but then how is it leaving you? And to me, I think that's more, how is my emotional, how is my mental state? How am I feeling with the intimacy that we have? Or do we even have any, you know, do I feel secure with you? All of these things come up, you know, do you really care? For me, well, they, you know, or is it just a hit and miss? What they used to call is the booty call. I mean, you know, come on. Ain't nothing and wrong with that. I, ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, uh, <laughs> and that was something I never, even as a young woman, I never understood. I never understood it because what I have is precious. You said you never understood it. Also, it's because you've never experienced it, right? Do you? Think- no, I've never. Ex- no, I've never experienced it. Although. I cannot say conversations with me haven't been had. No, but, and I used to but just my question is, you, mm-hmm. you, you've you never experienced it. No, no. Now, if you gave no. it a shot, do you think it might be something you could mess around in? No, love? no, because no? I have a very dear, uh-huh, I have very dear friend, and that, she, she was that, and I just, oh, okay, but, you know, I, it was just nothing for me. It was it was just something that just I didn't find. It doesn't it doesn't it tickle your fancy. For me. No, it was. I don't want to say anything negative because I have not experienced it. Mm-hmm. However, I knew it was not for me because of the way I felt about me and my body. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. I can see that. I definitely can see that. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing when you actually truly respect your body. I remember. Many years ago, before I met my wife, many, 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 many years ago before I met my wife, I met this young lady. She was actually older mm-hmm. than I, way older. She was probably 20 years older than me. And, Ooh. oh, yeah. She, no, no. <laughs> uh, what, what is a, a friend, uh, what is a, a male friend of mine, what he calls himself? He said, I was a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I wasn't a hoe. I, I, I've never considered myself a hoe because every young lady that okay. I've, ever, I've ever been with, I've treated them with the utmost respect. Okay. I, I actually don't even believe in hoes. People go through things within their life that mm. gets them to the next stage. Sometimes you may need the company of more than one person to get you to that one person. Sometimes. So what do you mean by company of more than one person? What type of company are you talking about? <clears throat> Well, as I say, it, this was before I was married, like many, many, many years ago. So I don't even remember all that stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> Distant memory. But if memory serves me correct, when you are out there dating and you're not in a committed relationship, you're out there feeling out what's good for you. And sometimes, uh-huh. and it takes time, you might find yourself with this one young lady who's great, everything. But there's just one thing that you can't take her seriously or as a young man there's this one thing that why you can't take him seriously sometimes people are good just for sleeping with and you enjoy that sometimes people are good for just talking and you enjoy that sometimes okay. people are good with talking and sleeping with but they can't cook so you enjoy that <laughs> okay. um, sometimes someone is good for sleeping with good cook good to talk but yet you hate their family so okay. you know there are different reasons why Certain people just don't make the cut. So I don't see it as hoeing. I see it as a process. There's there's a process to finding your king or queen or your next king or queen. You might have had your king or queen in the past, but sometimes relationships are like milk and they expire. So you have to move on to the next cup of milk. Okay. All right. And you know what? I'm going to, but I have my conversation with, with uh, my friend again. I'm going to ask him, explain yourself. <laughs> Ex- explain, <laughs> explain what hoeing is? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, everyone has their own, their own interpretation of what it is, for, but that's for mm-hmm. me because I've never mm-hmm. considered myself to be someone that was just trying to run through a bunch of women. You may have heard uh, one of the previous interviews that I've done with a gentleman by the name of Black and he mm. said he though he really you know enjoys women and is an entertainer of the opposite sex big time he never felt comfortable with having a bunch of spirits in his bed absolutely and that I agree it's it's a really big deal and at the same time even though you're not comfortable with having a bunch of spirits in your bed some you know things happen and sometimes you 
find yourself attracted to somebody they're attracted to you you do things and it actually grows into something more than what you ever thought it could be but then that ends so you move on to the next I don't consider it mm-hmm. hoeing I consider it living okay living exploring all right <laughs> tasting okay T- you all said right. wait you said tasting tasting oh you so nasty <laughs> <laughs> Being real. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you it's it really it life is a smorgasbord. You it ever is. you it's ever go to one of those all you can eat buffets? You don't need everything at the buffet because everything is not for you. But the That's things right. yeah, the things you like, you 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 have some and then you eat your plate and then you go back and you might have a little bit of something different that you never tasted before. And you say, mm-hmm. well, you know what? I never knew I liked that. Wow. That's right. Tasting. Tasting. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So is there anything that's off the table for you? Like, have you ever been with, is there a nationality that you've never tried that you'd be willing to try or anything of the sorts or, or, hey, we got to know, would you ever try being with a female? No, I haven't. No desire. No desire. Um, you know, I never found no desire. Hey, you my friend, me best bud. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if if you, um, if you had a female friend and she came over and you guys hit it off great, you had a nice emotional relationship where she knew you, you knew her, and she went in for the kiss, what would you do? Not. <laughs> back up. Back up. And But, you know, actually, um, I think I was kind of a little bit slow. <laughs> I remember when I was working, and this was back in the um, – Oh, this has must have been in like in the early nineties, maybe. Or was it late eighties? But anyway, there was a young lady whom I thought was just friendly. Mm-hmm. And you know, we and <laughs> She <laughs> we wanted to, to get friendly, huh? <laughs> no, she was I thought she was just friendly until someone told me, um, Miss Miss uh female black, uh, don't you know what's going on? I said, No, she's just friendly. <laughs> <laughs> like, so yeah. we used to we used to have this um deli in the building that I worked in um on the main floor. And we all used to, you know, congregate down there to get either breakfast, you know, and if it was bad weather we would get our uh, lunch and stuff. So we used to stand online and we was just talking and she would be rubbing my back and rubbing my back and we mm. I'm just yabbing, yabbing, yabbing. <laughs> You didn't know the whole time. It. The whole time she just wanted to taste <laughs> your sandwich, huh? One day, um, uh, uh, one of uh, my other colleagues came downstairs with me, and the same thing. And she just rubbing my back and talking. And when we went upstairs, she said, "Um, Miss uh, Female Black, do you not know?" I said, "What are you talking about? You know, you know." She was. I said, "Uh, uh-uh, we just friends." No. Mm-hmm. She was making plans on you. <laughs> hey, as I said, sometimes there are things that you've never had before that once you taste it, you might like something new. I mean, that was that was comical to me because in no way did it even enter my mind. Hmm. Just totally off the table for you. Yeah, totally off the table. So you've it's never kissed girl. a female or anything like that? On cheek. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On cheek. <laughs> hey, girlfriend. That's it. Hey, that's girlfriend. It. That's it. On cheek. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I don't. I mean, to reach your own. And it's always that's, good to know what's not for you. That that that's right. To thy own self be true and know who you are. One hundred percent. Well, yeah. I'm gonna have to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you here on Talking Sweet. Uh, we learned a lot about just being seasoned. Call you seasoned, but not a senior citizen. That's right, seasoned. That's right. And you are open for relationships, and but even if it doesn't happen, you are living your beautiful life. And there's yes, absolutely I am. nothing wrong with it. No, and it's a beautiful thing to have peace, um, to be able to know that you're all right, and to have those circle of family and friends who love you and you can love them back and it's good and you can be yourself. That's a beautiful thing. I'm going to agree. And sure. If you were to have someone in your life, how do you think your kids would take it? 
one would gravitate and there would be issues with the other three and that's the truth <laughs> issues like they might beat them up <laughs> Well, not beat them up, but it's always just looking for something or, They're super you know, protective of mom. Right. And extremely, extremely wow. when it comes to, to that. Even then in cases that people that are, that are in my life, they've had a jealous bone. So, yeah. How do you, how do you even maneuver when you're trying to find a, a relationship with someone, but yet your kids are out here being super son or a super daughter and like, <laughs> nah, chill. I don't like him. <laughs> But you actually feel like, well, he's actually really cool to me. And uh, you don't sleep with him. So <laughs> to the left, to the left. <laughs> no, I have to put them in their place. Now, I don't have a problem with that in which they know. I'll put them in their place really quick and we move on from there. And if you don't want to be a party of, okay, then you do the phone calls or when, he, when, when we're not around, when he's not around or what have you, you come visit or whatnot. But no. Because you see, I respect yours, yeah, you ain't right. and you will respect mine. Oh, snap. She done laid the Lord down. <laughs> the, the beautiful thing about that is also that you live in different states. Yeah, but even when we, because there was difficulty with my partner, yeah. There was difficulty at the, and two of them never did. They but never co signed, even though it was been so many years, they never co signed. That's right. But you know what? That's you. Was it because it's, it's not their dad? And how can you. I have, I don't say it because I don't know. Once I said what I had to say, that was a wrap. Because you know what? You will not come into my home or you will not treat a person that I'm involved with. In, in a manner that you think you should because of yeah. that's not who my raised and that's not what you're going to get out right. not in my presence no Ooh, mama has spoken <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up you laid it down and i appreciate it you are here talking sweet with sweet baby j as always it's a no face no case scenario you can always have your anonymous interview where you can share your life blessings life's curses whatever's going on in your world just call in 669-241-1422. Nothing's off the table when talking sweet. Right? All right. Oh, you better stop with that 1-900 voice. <laughs> All, right. All right. This was really nice. Wow. I, I, I feel you.